Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020, regular selectmen's meeting. Uh, is all the selectmen are here except for Mark Pendergast is not going to be able to make it. We have the town manager, the town clerk, and the town planner with us. Is uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Is our first order is the approval of a. Uh, December 8th minutes. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Myself is a yes. And Ed, you were not here, correct? Correct. All right. So there's uh, three with one abstention, Patty. Um. <clears throat> We have no public comment. Is uh, We have a public hearing and approval of the January 5th, 2021 Supplemental Town Meeting Warrant. Um, I'll open it up. Is We have no public comment on it or anything? Um, yeah, we um, any questions or anything from the selectmen? No, seems to be okay. Um, in that case, um, all right, so this is where I should write, read through it, Patty, and go article by article, correct? Yeah, yep. all right. Thank you. Is uh, article one, select the moderator, article two, tell the shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the land use ordinance with an exhibit A attached to it. The Board of Selectmen recommended a yes vote of 4-0. Article 3, shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sell or transfer any town-owned property, including land and buildings, including the execution of all agreements and other documentation to effect such sales or transfer transfers as it deems advisable in the best interest and is in the best interest of the town. And the Board of Selectmen recommended a yes vote of 4 0 on that. In Article 4, shall the town, one, approve a capital project consisting of various renovations, upgrades, and improvements to the Burke Water Plant, including engineering and design costs, transaction costs, and other expenses reasonably related thereto. Two, to appropriate the sum of $1,200,000 to buy, provide for the cost of the project. Three, authorize the treasurer and chairman of the Board of Selectmen to fund the appropriation through the issuance of general obligation securities to the town with or without call provisions, with or without premiums, and including temporary notes in anticipation of the sale thereof in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $1,200,000, and four, delegate to the treasurer and the chairman of the Board of Selectmen the authority and discretion to fix the dates, maturities, interest rates, denominations, calls for redemption with or without premium, refunding, form, and other details of said securities, including authority to execute and deliver the securities on behalf of the town. And the Board of Selectmen recommended a yes vote of 4-0. Um, so there, those are the four articles. Is um, Looking for a motion to accept. So moved. And a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is yes. It's 4 0, Patty. Thank you. And I'll bring the public hearing to a close. Um, reports of committees. The BCTV committee does not have anything. I don't believe Envision Berwick has anything, do they, James? It's 
wrapped in with the department. With the, okay. So let's go right into the department's report. James, right. go ahead up. Community development and planning. All right. Thank you. No, thank you. So I uh, recorded this presentation a little bit earlier today. There's a lot of information and in the interest of time. Um, so feel free to stop it if, you, if you'd like. If you have any questions in the meantime, I can pause it. Um, this is un it's about 16 minutes um, and we cover both code planning, assessing and a little bit of Envision Berwick and, and what we're up to with the, the planning department. So let me know if you can just give me a thumbs up if you can hear my recording. This is a. Uh... Hello, my name is James Bellissimo. I'm the director of the Community Development and Planning Department for the Town of Berwick. This presentation is a little bit about who we are as staff of the department, what we've been up to, and what we're looking forward to doing in the near and to midterm with the town. Our department is effectively made up of three sub-departments, planning and community development, myself with Envision Berwick as a spur off from that, code enforcement, Jen handles code enforcement, building inspecting and plumbing inspecting, and assessing, Karen is our is our day-to-day. -day. She handles data entry questions. Michelle helps with data entry and measuring and listing. Same with Mike and Paul is the office supervisor. So code planning and assessing, some days you'll see that all three of us are in there and it's very active. And uh, all of our jobs overlap. And if you want to come in and say you want to build a house, your first step is to meet with Jen and I often. We meet together a lot of the times to determine if the use you want to do is allowed in the given zone and what type of review is required. So it's either it's allowed, you can do it, go ahead. You might, you might need a permit through Jen. You might need planning board approval. Step two, we review your applications. Once we know that you're allowed to do it in the zone, um, there's either a planning board application or a building per permit application. And we, we, we do work hard to streamline this effort. After you are all approved and permitted, now comes inspections throughout the build out of sites. Jen will go out and make sure that the uh, building meets the plans. And then finally, number four, we get that construction on the tax rolls. That's really what it's all, what it's all about, making sure it's assessed uh, equitably and then uh, it's reviewed periodically. So a little bit more about code and inspections with Jen. Our land use ordinance and comprehensive plan can be perfect, but it's only as useful as it can be enforced. And Jen does an incredible job of just getting things done, getting things resolved. She has a real talent for it and she's an incredible asset to the town. 125 building permits have been issued this year alone, most of them renovations. And to be able to do that while working remote through this COVID times is just incredible to see. Jen handles new uh, construction, she reviews and inspects and permits, renovations, septic, internal plumbing, shoreland zoning. She's also in charge of E911 addressing. So for any driveway that has more than one house on it, so two houses, it requires a street name and coordinating that and making sure everything is updated is quite a task. Lastly, we probably receive just as many complaints as we do building permit request. And uh, we go through the gamut and the spectrum of, of, of vetting these complaints and violations, a lot of disputes and going back to the ordinance and making sure that yes, this is a violation. Yes, the town should be involved or no, this is a civil matter. We don't hesitate uh, oftentimes if, if we don't know the direct answer of going to Steve, going to uh, MMA legal, going to our town attorney um, and just making sure that um, if we ever do go to court, and this is our number one thing, if we ever go to court that we win because we did our due diligence. So um, we have a process and when it comes to resolving these complaints and violations and we take it very seriously. And as I've mentioned before, we're very interested in streamlining these processes and, and learning what it takes to resolve issues and, and even be proactive to prevent issues into the future. 
The assessing department has been very active. They helped the town with a complete revaluation to reflect the market values of all the properties in Berwick. And every year there's quarterly inspections. So about 25% of Berwick's properties are reviewed each year to make sure that the market values are still in line to where they should be. Their main project recently has been reviewing farmland and open space programs to make sure that people still qualify. People receive a, a tremendous discount and some properties in town aren't upholding their end of the bargain. And uh, the, ta- the town is also has a file on all commercial businesses. Their equipment is part of property taxes. And lastly, um, a, ma- a major task for the assessing department is to prepare for tax commitments and audits. Our GIS is still a work in progress, but it's made significant improvements over the years. When I first was employed by the town of Berwick, a lot of the times we had to paste uh, tax maps together, physical paper tax maps with match lines. Now you can go on online now, we have them digitized and you can scroll in, click on a lot and it'll, it'll link you to the assessing database. There's so much more that we can do with it and uh, we're improving it every year. We have a chance to do it. And this is something that assessing and planning work together to keep updated and maintained. The land use ordinance is the primary go-to document for both code and planning. We amend this document one to two times per year and amendments require research, look at data analysis, what other towns are doing, Uh, It takes time to write the ordinance to make sure it fits with what the town needs and wants. And then there's a review process with planning board, uh, community feedback and legal uh, opinions as well. Uh, It is up to planning and code to enforce and administer the land use ordinance. This this means ensuring uh, continued compliance with the ordinance and addressing violations in a timely manner. A lot of our job is is customer service, interacting with the community. We love the activity and the day-to-day in the office with answering questions and just talking about what's possible within the town. These two maps make up the zones in the zoning. They range from stream protection, which is highly restrictive, to our village overlay district, which encourages development. And the zones, they, they change subtly from in between those two extremes. The main mechanism for how the zoning and how the maps work, based on the colors you saw, the different zones, and those zones are the columns. And within the rows, it's either C, A, P, or X. C means conditional use or planning board review. A, you can do it without a permit. P is a permit through Gen, and X is not allowed under any circumstances. And this is why we have amendments. Um, Sometimes things are allowed that we don't really think fit anymore, or there are things that aren't allowed that we think do actually fit. And there are new categories and definitions that can be created, new performance standards, and, uh, you know, land use is an evolving thing, and, and we try to stay on top of it and stay proactive. Everything you see in the land use ordinance has to have a basis from the comprehensive plan. Otherwise, it doesn't have legal standing. We're undergoing a comprehensive planning effort now, and this effort starts with a survey, getting feedback from the community, inventorying our resources, coming up with plans for future land use, our economy, housing, age friendly downtown, rec master plan, transportation, public facilities, public safety, public works, public utilities, regional coordination, capital improvement plan, how we pay for it all. And lastly, this boils down to goals, policies, and strategies from which that's where Envision Berwick comes in and they make recommendations to the select board and to the broader community how to implement the plan. So to make a good plan, we need to have good data. And research and data is something that the, this department handles. We know based off of the school populations, for example, that the school population has been very stable since 1989. And we wanna make sure in the department that 
the current trends don't create any bubbles, which create extra cost. And within the department, we can really only take the edges off of spurs and growth because what restrictions regulations mean is we are limiting the availability of options for people's properties. So we also take that very seriously. But with that said, you can see since that a housing recession, the housing crash, our growth numbers are not really close to where they were in the mid 2000s. And we don't anticipate the number is really ever getting to that point again. With the edge development, we're going to see a one-time increase of uh, multifamilies, which will be really good because we're increasing density. But there, there's not going to be an increase of housing like we have saw because of certain conditions that created that environment for that housing development. One of the challenges for the town is getting a better distribution of property values. Right now, we're at 87% residential which is not uncommon for main communities. However, we can be forward thinking and we can improve our commercial industrial share of, that, of, the, of the property value and property burden in town. And a good percentage or two of that is gonna come from the edge development alone. And we have other areas, Route 9, Route 4, other areas, Route 236 that we need to look at a master plan, just like we've done for the downtown, to get that balance to a place where the burden is just off the residents of the town. And we can shift it more to the commercial uses, which have a less impact to the resources and services to the town. Also, as part of this department, we sit on CACS, which is a Kittery Area Comprehensive Transportation System of Berwick, South Berwick, York, Elliott, and Kittery. The highways, the state highways, they make up a transportation system and one flaw in the system is going to affect the rest of the system. Transportation is truly comprehensive of that nature and complex. So the, these towns come together and they work together to solve um, transportation issues in the region. Here's an example of a CACS project. We're lined up for funding for 2024. Um, it's about a $600,000 project, and this includes sidewalks, improving the circulation of uh, cars, and also pedestrian safety and access as well. This department is also involved with the MS4, which is Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. We're involved with uh, the similar neighboring towns where in an urban area, when it goes down a catch basin, it goes to piping and it goes into our river. So that runoff from the roof, runoff from the driveway, pet waste, leaves, fertilizer, motor, motor oil, detergents, trash, all that ends up directly in our river. And because of permitting, with environmental permitting, the town is responsible for improving what goes into the rivers. There's quite a bit of MS4 infrastructure. We've got 100 plus catch basins, piping, and about a dozen outfalls that are inspected and maintained annually. So as part of the MS4 permit, we are required to update outfall number seven, which is at the corner of Moulton Street. It's also going to be the home of one of the entrances to Great Falls Park. Uh, this outfall is going to capture the water that's coming down Moulton Street, and actually is gonna filter it before it hits Salmon Falls River. So it's an exciting project for both environmental and for recreational purposes. Envision Berwick acts as the community and economic development arm of the planning department in, in broader town. This is where you see the germinations of some, of some fantastic ideas that you see around town. This is where brand, the branding comes from. This is where the lawn chairs, Sullivan Square, concert series came from. We're gonna be working on implementing the rec master plan and age friendly plans. Our main priority coming up is protecting farmland in Berwick and encouraging a local farming economy. And in our next video here, this next slide is a real showcase of how everything comes together.
the phrase in craft brewing is if you can create great beer and create great atmosphere, then you got to win a combination. I'm fascinated with creating things, whether it's building or cooking. You can just take all this stuff and just create something, and it tastes good. It's 50% luck and 50% knowledge for me. I was born and raised here. And a friend of mine shot me a link to a newspaper article. It just said Berwick, the town beer could save. 97% of people want to brew it. What? Was, it, was I confident that it was going to work? No, not at all. <laughs> you can ask my wife. Grand opening day was a Saturday, and I was sitting right here with my head in my hands, just going, please don't let this fail. <laughs> we opened right at noon. My wife kind of leans over my ear, and she goes, don't turn around. I said, why? And I turned look. And within, literally within three minutes, we had a line out to the sidewalk. And then the following day, the exact same way. I think people would just start. So um, this is the article that was referenced in Jamie's uh, video there. And uh, you can see the usual suspects to the right there. And uh, all we did is we, we um, put an ad in the beer journal and that led to that led to an article being created, Jamie seeing it, and uh, and now we have a brewery downtown. And there's a very similar story to how we got the York walk-in and Kenny Bunk savings. So you can start seeing how all the branding and all the you know all the efforts that Envision Berwick pulls together, the planning department to to make things make really cool things happen that the community wants. So. I invite the community to think about what we want downtown and want in town because when we put in a, a coordinated effort behind it, we've been very successful. So I know that was a long presentation. Thank you for sticking with it. And I just appreciate your time. Thank you, James. Any, any questions of James? I, I just want to say is, is you know, is when I was first in a selectman back in the mid nineties, my first term, is, you know, much of this was, you know, wasn't even thought of is, you know, the whole idea of community developing planning is we were just at that time, we were just maintaining what we had. So is over the last 10 years is uh, quite a, quite a big improvement has happened in town is, uh, and, and again, I want to you know, point back to the downtown vision committee and envision Berwick for leading that charge and is one of the things that really stands out about that whole process was that it was driven by just everyday people. It wasn't the, you no, know, the elected officials, it wasn't appointed people, it was people, you no, know, just wanting to get involved to make the town better. So is, again, thank you, James. Thank you. It's an honor to be a part of it and it's, it feels great to be supported. So couldn't do it without all of you. If nothing else, we will move on. We have no appointments. Unfinished business, we have nothing under. Is town manager report. Uh, I have a brief report tonight, but I'd like to thank the Public Works Department uh, for the great work they did getting rid of all the snow. Uh, we had quite a bit here in Southern Maine and up where I live, we had about half of that. Um, it was pretty amazing to see. Um, Water department, uh, we're starting to get uh, back permission slips from the people who said they would allow us to walk their land and take a look at uh, different properties, along, mostly along Rochester Street and Hubbard uh, Road. Uh, so that those are coming in. Um, I don't think we'll be doing anything till after the first of the year. Uh, I wanna make sure I, I get as many back as I can before they start uh, doing that. But um, I'm excited about that process. Um, and hopefully the bond passes. So I have received uh, phase two of what they will do, uh, but we will need that funding to, to move that forward. So I'm anxious to see the public approve our uh, request for funding. Um, the uh, Spirit of uh, AmeriCorps uh, Award this year is coming up. So I ask uh, the board members to think about uh, a group or individual uh, in town who they feel would be a good choice for that award. It's based on contributions and volunteerism. Uh, we've had some great choices in the last two years. Um, so hopefully we'll just continue that. It's always great to honor those who 
volunteer for our community and this community has a lot of them. So it'd be very exciting. Um, we've been we've been talking to Great Falls uh, about the edge. Uh, we They held a uh, public Zoom meeting uh, that was broadcast last Wednesday. Uh, that was very exciting to see uh, what their new layout looks like. Uh, and uh, I was hoping they'd show some of their renditions, but they didn't do that. Um, but but I'm sure later on they will. They're expecting, uh, they went to before the planning board on the, I don't know if they did on that Thursday or not because of the no, storm. No, it was canceled because uh, of the storm. So they'll be back at their next meeting, uh, but uh, they're gonna be presenting to them. So you, hopefully you get to see quite a bit if you pay attention. And, uh, and they expect to break ground uh, in uh, the early spring. So you'll see some demolition going on. Uh, they're tearing down the concrete building and the, all the buildings on that side of the, of the lot. Uh, so there'll be uh, a lot of activity coming. So it's exciting to be part of that, as James said. Uh, and that's all I have for now. Any questions of Steve? No, if not, we'll move on. Um, I had nothing under Selectman's communications is uh, we'll move to accounts payable. <clears throat> we have a payroll warrant number 37 from December 17th, 2020. The amount is $67,622.55. We have an account payable warrant number 39 for December 22nd, 2020. That's for the amount of $255,243.12. And we have a payroll warrant number 38 for December 23rd, 2020, for the amount of $73,773.12. I will make a motion to pay our bills. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second from Noah. No discussion. I'll go through the roll. We have Ed. Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is a yes. Four zero. Thank you. And that brings us to our new business is a personnel policy adoption. This is a document that uh, Lisa Hustis and finance department and, and input from department heads and legal have been working on for well over a year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're back and forth with editing. Uh, this is the final edition. Um, it, they've done a great job. It's very comprehensive. It ties in with much of it as it can with our union contracts. Uh, so um, I, I think you, I updated you with a new copy uh, on Monday of uh, some of the changes that minor changes that were made uh, to finish this. But uh, they did a great job and. Uh, I think it's going to be a useful document moving forward as we, as we grow and uh, change personnel. Uh, good, good for people to know what's going on and how they can do things. But um, good guide. Any questions of Steve? There appears to be none. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll move we accept the policy as presented. I'll Whatever. second your motion. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Before we vote, I just want to say, is you know, it, this has been an ongoing thing. It's been going on for quite a while. Is I really, uh, you know, I went through it in quite thoroughly, and uh, it covers most anything I could ever think of. So it does. Is uh, um, all right. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken. Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is yes. Four zero. All right, we need to set the polling hours for January 5th, 2021 election. And the town clerk recommends 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I move we accept the town clerk's recommendation. Second. Go ahead, Noah. And um, I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is yes. Four zero. And we have a request to close customer service on January 5th, 2021. That's so Patty can use her personnel 
as clerks in the, up in the uh, upstairs there. So, so moved. Motion. We have a second. second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. Is I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. We have no quick claim deeds, no abatements. We have no second public comment because we have no public. We have no executive session. Other business and non-agenda items. I just like to make sure that everybody is aware that uh, we have the customer service area is, is down several people. Um, so be patient. Luckily, this time of year, it's really quiet, but we uh, had an employee that possibly was exposed to uh, COVID-19 and we asked her to isolate um, and willingly did that. Sounds like everything's looking okay at home, but we, we just don't know with this and uh, want to make sure everybody stays safe, not just the staff, but the people in Berwick as well. So, so uh, please just keep practicing that. And, uh, we've had... Uh, I think I was told yesterday we have 85 cases of COVID in, in Berwick, Berwick, yeah, which is quite a, quite a few for a small community. So uh, it's not over yet, but uh, we've been doing pretty good. I think. Steve, I do have one question. Uh, looking through the the uh, personal policy, uh, you show Christmas Eve as a holiday for the staff. So does that mean town office is closed on Christmas Eve? Yes, it does. Yep. Okay. I'm not sure people are aware of that yet. Yeah, I, we will put it on the website. Um, but it, last year we did it as well. It was part of our contracts that we did with the uh, unions. So we just go across the board. Uh, we did it for everybody. So police and fire, of course, don't get that luxury. But um, but otherwise, yeah, I'll make sure the public is aware. Thank you. Okay. It's on the website already. Okay. Thank you. Very well. Um, anything else from anybody? I just, I just want to wish everybody happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. It's been a particularly tough one. Sure is. As, um, is last last springtime, as we didn't know what was going to be coming down the road, and uh, I, th I think that the town employees have really stepped up to the plate. They have. As, um, and we've kept the town going, and pretty smoothly, I would say. Yeah. So um, again, happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas, happy new years, and uh, see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> As, uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Is Merry Christmas. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy new year. <laughs>